What's up, athletes? So after I made my last video on Think Before You Sleep, this came up in my recommendations. And I sat there for a minute with the tiniest bit of hope that he had changed, and he was admitting that he was wrong on some things. A common thing the red pill and even he preaches in this video does seem to indicate he believes that girls only want materialistic and triple six guys. So by all accounts, this should be a good thing. If feminism is in fact brainwashing women into liking feminine men, then that's breaking both the norm the red pill teaches, but also opens up the dating market immensely. So you'd think he'd be happy about this. So, uh, spoiler alert, he's mad and it's really funny. Hi everyone, today I wanted to talk about the male gaze, the female gaze, and why the heck are women attracted to dad bods? And why are men so mad about it? These are tricky questions because of how skewed the perception is of like what women actually want, you know? Men who were perceived as more softer and like more in tune with their feminine side, those were the men that I was most attracted to. We don't want to be overpowered by men anymore. Wow, that's super inaccurate. Because if it were true that most women or even a majority of women wanted that, then you wouldn't constantly hear stuff like this. Now, this actually makes me kind of sad. Just listen to the absolute disgust and hate in his first sentence. This man is broken. He has been hurt by someone before. Look, if you need someone to talk to, I understand. I'm willing to listen to you. I've been hurt too. It took me time to heal. If you need to talk, I totally get if you wouldn't want to talk to someone like me. There are people here for you. Wow, that's super inaccurate, because if it were true that most women or even a majority of women wanted that, then you wouldn't constantly hear stuff like this. Even though I may be like five feet tall, nothing less than five, five ten. And I mean constantly. Uh, Would you date a shorter guy? No. What? So when I look for a guy, I look for someone who has a very safe aura, but with shorter guys, I don't feel as safe. And in the past. What do you look for in a man, physically? Well, I like a man to be bigger than me and to be, and to be, have a strong character, somebody who has a stronger character than I have. And to the extent where don't dating apps give women the ability to filter men out by height? If it wasn't a strong preference in most women for their men to be bigger and more powerful than them so they can serve as a protector, then they wouldn't constantly ask for it. Okay, so a couple of things here. First off, the past is not exactly a great example of modern standards. That's a poor argument to make against this feminist who says she's personally attracted to feminine men. Furthermore, there is a significant difference between a preference and a standard. A preference is something you would like, but don't need, while a standard is something that is a requirement to you. Yes, a lot of people have incredibly high dating standards. I blame online dating for this. But let's not pretend that only girls want the most attractive guy. Alright ladies, so obviously height matters to you. We're about to find out. Does weight matter to men? <laughs> well, it does. Matter in girls for you? Hell, uh, it depends. What it depends on? Like if she's like a big, big, big fat girl? Nah, she gotta be like slim and thick, you feel me? Yeah, like if her belly's too big for her ass, then nah, right? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> belly's bigger than her ass is a pass? That's a, that's a pass. Weight matter. It depends on the night, honestly, and what drinks we had that night, honestly. But typically, I can't do too thick, but I can do semi-thick, you know what I'm saying? Uh, for my boy JT to ask him a very important question. Does weight matter for girls? Of course. Of course. Why? I like skinny bitches. You like skinny bitches? Can I on it? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. I'm guessing, though, it's different for guys because they aren't constantly getting messaged by girls like girls are by guys. Anyway, the woman from the first clip is 23-year-old YouTuber Nicole Raffi. You may remember her from a video that I made two years ago where I clipped her saying this. Hi, I hate men. Can you give us some context as to why she said that? Is that like her opening or something? Either way, though, I'd like to have some context as to why she said that. I mean, if the comment was directed towards one of your videos, I mean, she's totally justified. Don't be going around trying to play the moral high ground here 
and how she's evil for not liking men, when your entire channel is built on hating women. You may not have explicitly said you hate women, but everything you talk about has this bitter, disgusted tone to it. That video of hers has since been deleted, and it's been a while since she said it, so I usually don't hold people accountable for bad takes that are old. But considering that she said it again in the video that I'm responding to... On my channel, I'm pretty open about being fearful of men, hating the occasional man, you know what I mean? So since she said that recently, I'm going to hold her to it. But the video today is about dad bods. Well, sort of. Let's hear her argument. Okay, so recently I've seen the rise again in the love for dad bods online. Next trend, I want to see some appreciation for the mom bod. And what I see is a lot of women talking about liking dad bods, appreciating dad bods. And you would think that more men would be happy about this or, you know, appreciative of this and like feeling like, okay, women are embracing more body types. But instead, it just kind of fuels a lot more anger in men, actually at least from what I've noticed. That doesn't really make sense. Yeah, this is the first time hearing of this, mostly the whole guys are upset thing. I'm really curious on what she says and what Mr. Sleep thinks. This video is two weeks old, so maybe this phenomenon hasn't reached my town or something. With all the people saying that women have standards that are too high, you would think that a pretty sizable number of men would be happy that they can get away with eating a few extra hamburgers per week. Let's see her evidence that men are getting mad. These friggin' women are talking about one some big old fat bearded country boy that can't see his back. Okay, it seems like this guy's a little offended, but from a critical standpoint, it looks like he could be a fitness slash alpha male type influencer, and women not being attracted to his body type might affect his market, so it makes sense that he doesn't want that to be the case. Since there is a financial or social incentive to him having that opinion, I think it's hard to make the point that this is something that people believe in general. Let's see her second example. That's fine, but I shouldn't get shit on when I say I'm not attracted to fat girls and I will not date a fat girl. This guy literally said it was fine, so it doesn't seem like good evidence of your point either. The thing he's mad about is fat acceptance advocates saying that you're a bigot if you don't want to date them, not women who are attracted to dad bods. Last example. This, yet again, doesn't seem like anger. It seems like he's making a joke for TikTok and if anything, the emotion he is displaying is depression. She uses a fourth example, but it still doesn't feel like anger. And I also notice that these are all gym bros who don't actually make up a massive portion of the population. Fair enough. With the exception of the first guy, these are not arguments to make against guys being mad about this. Except for your video where you do get mad. It does not fit what she's saying. Because most people are overweight. So I think it's hard to generalize your take that men are mad about dad bods with this evidence. And this kind of thing is really a problem on both sides of the equation. Everyone is using low quality evidence for their points. Uh, you did the exact same thing. You used incredibly low quality evidence to argue against her. I used low quality evidence to argue against you, arguing against her. For example, I recently saw this from the opposite end of the equation, from the Whatever podcast. What percentage of men do you find attractive? Maybe like 1%, maybe 1% of men you like find attractive. Maybe, maybe like 0.5. Not very many, like maybe five to ten percent. Fifteen percent. Fifteen percent. Yeah. Okay. It's very low. I really don't know. Probably under ten. Under ten percent. Yeah. Okay. Ten percent. Top ten percent. Yeah. Oh look, you did it again. You pulled one source and using that as your entire argument. Yes, I did that too on some earlier videos I did. My point is, is I don't complain about the quality of the evidence of the video unless that becomes a topic. All I'm doing here is calling out the hypocrisy that he's stating. Now, obviously, the point of this clip was to make people say, See, women bad. They aren't attracted to most men. Why is it that every single Red Pill podcast, they bring out attractive women and ask them who they're attracted to? The more attractive a girl is, the higher her standards are going to be. It's just rage bait. They're not doing it for a statistic. They're doing it to get people mad. But think about it for a second. 70% of people are overweight, and contrary to what Nicole says in her video, I think that most people don't want a partner who is overweight. Second, do you walk out on the street and think everyone is attractive? Now, this might just be a me thing, but I don't go around thinking, oh, she's attractive, oh, she's attractive, oh, she's really attractive. Sure, sometimes I'll notice people like I did in the clip he played, but even then I don't really pay it any mind. I might go in my head, huh, she's cute, and move on. I don't focus on people when I'm on a bike ride or when I'm walking to my college. 
It's one thing I was in class and I saw an attractive girl there. It's another thing entirely to go around town and think, she's attractive, she's attractive, she's ugly, she's attractive, because I know I'm never going to see them again. Maybe I'm the weird one here, maybe I'm the outlier, fair enough. I just don't focus on people when I'm trying to get from A to B. I think if you actually questioned people in general and had a real conversation with them, they would probably say that they personally only find about 1-5% to of people attractive. So then you admit that guys also find only a small percent of women attractive. So then why are we even having these red pill, blue pill arguments about how women are much more materialistic than guys are, and it's a bad thing they're only attracted to the top 10% of guys? That doesn't mean that everyone else is unattractive, it just means that you aren't their type. Okay, so what are you even arguing now? You admit that this entire conflict is stupid, you admit that guys do it too, you admit that there's bad evidence. How is this even still a debate at this point? So I see bad takes a lot from the other side too, but this video is about Nicole, so let's get back to her argument. So you're making this video, a video you know is contradictory, and you're making it to argue with someone who's saying there are girls that like fat guys. What is the title even in reference to now? This is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I'm trying to keep all the context in as I can, but is anyone else lost? So they get off topic for a little bit, but then they come back with this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful gem. <laughs> But all right, let's hear about the kind of men that women are actually attracted to. Real life people examples are Harry Styles, Conan Gray, Timothy Chalamet. Because these men can be in touch with their feminine side, not be afraid to show it. Women are attracted to their talent, how they behave to their fans, how they behave in interviews, and thus creating a large woman-led cult-like following. They are a good example of what many women want and men hate them for it. Uh, I'm having a tough time imagining that Nicole expects people to read why people were criticizing Harry Styles. <laughs> this is a troll. This has to be a troll. <laughs> I can see why he's mad now. <laughs> They're destroying America. They want... <laughs> They want men to be weak. <laughs> I can't. This is a troll. This has to be a troll. <laughs> or maybe she had the idea to edit this photo in after she already recorded. But that's not what Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens, who was a woman, are responding to. Which is all kind of confusing because her original point that I didn't show because it was too long-winded was actually talking about Uncle Jesse from Full House, who was mostly written by men, being desirable because he's good with kids and doesn't treat women like crap. Which seems reasonable, but how do we go from that to Harry Styles wearing a dress? Ah, uh, him being nice to women is reasonable, not a standard. My god. Because that's what they are actually responding to. It's about Hollywood and mainstream media promoting weak men and the feminization of men, and Candace is echoing the fact that most women don't want men who act like women. They aren't hating on women for liking dad bods or men who treat them well. Yeah. <laughs> no! <laughs> the Hollywood is making men <laughs> uh, This guy has never seen a movie in the last millennia. He thinks this. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't <laughs> make up your mind. First you said that girls only want a small percentage of guys. Now you're saying that the media <laughs> Okay. Now you're saying that the media is trying to make women fall in love with Harry Styles because he wore a dress. <laughs> <laughs> These are two completely different things. They're not even they're not interchangeable. <laughs> they're either trying to <laughs> They're either super materialistic and want guys that are six feet, six inches, and six figures, or they want to date guys like Harry Styles. I guess he makes six figures, but uh 
the, uh, basically what he's saying is there's this civil war between what the media wants and what women actually want, which is. <laughs> oh, Candace Owens. Oh, Ben Shapiro. <laughs> uh, they don't know anything about what they're talking about. Also, there are like a lot of pictures of Harry Styles doing this. There is no way this guy is straight. Oh, no. He's making out with the. Dude, that doesn't mean anything. Nicole was just saying she's attracted to guys like Harry. You can be attracted to people who aren't straight, you know. Just look at how many guys like lesbian porn. It, this is just a horrible hill to take a stand on. Sexuality is a spectrum. It's not like no. anyone's 100% straight or 100% gay. I disagree, but let's continue hearing more about what women are attracted to. Did you put that there? Or was that part of her video? Either way, it's not needed. Take, for example, Ezra Miller's character, Patrick, and Perks of Being a Wallflower. Uh, are you sure you want to go there? Yeah. Also, I had to come to terms with that Ezra Miller as Frankenfurter was my sexual awakening. I had the fattest crush on Ezra Miller. Okay, we are definitely going there. And okay, yeah, that's weird. I don't have anything to argue against here. And yes, these videos were made after all the criminal stuff that Ezra did became public. And she does mention that Ezra Miller is a bad guy, but seriously, this is bad optics. Though I guess we can hear her out. But we're just going to try and ignore who Ezra Miller is and just focus on their character, Patrick, instead. Patrick was never shirtless, never sexualized, not written for the female gaze whatsoever. Patrick's only interactions with women were kind and endearing. Hey, nothing. Hey, nothing. Oh, suck it, virginity pledges. And the character ended up being gay anyway, yet was still perceived as one of the most attractive characters, at least to me and my female friend group. He was the most attractive character to you and your female friend group. Is that enough evidence to say that this archetype is attractive to women in general? Or is it just you and your friends? I mean, yeah, it's not enough evidence for anything, but it's the exact same thing you do. Maybe not with your friend group, but clearly with your YouTube channel. The title of your video is what you called her out for. You have one example of a girl like this, and then you say it's the entirety of the movement trying to do this. Because people tend to pick friendships based on people who they share interests with, meaning that you and your friends are most likely going to think the same things are attractive. So just because your friends like it doesn't mean that everyone likes it. For me personally, one of the most attractive men to me is Fletcher Shears who is very comfortable dressing however he pleases, will sometimes put on a long wig and a dress and makeup. And while some men may be like, what the f do you see in this dude? I am like, I love a man who is very confident in himself and isn't scared to show a more feminine side to him, dressing how he wants, not caring. Okay, this is the third man in a dress with a questionable sexuality that she's mentioned in a single video. And I'm starting to notice a pattern. Who cares what she's attracted to? Maybe she's a closeted lesbian, not quite sure if she's truly gay or not. Who are you to judge why she's attracted to her cross-dressers? A lot of times, we just want a dude who is comfortable in himself and looks like us. Yeah, maybe a little too much like you. Also, Fletcher looks like he's on drugs in this photo. That's a red flag. She keeps repeating over and over that her biggest qualifier of attraction is whether or not a guy is nice to women. Which, of course, is important, but nice doesn't always mean good. Which brings us to the female gaze. Let's talk about the female gaze. It's the same as the male gaze. However, can you guess? It's from the perspective of a woman. Basically, any time that you've watched a Greta Gerwig movie, it's from the female gaze. Think of a character like Timothy Chalamet, Edward Cullen in Twilight. So why are women attracted to men like this? Timothy Chalamet's character was attractive in Lady Bird? The whole point of his character, Kyle, in that movie was to be a pretentious asshole who lies to the main character to get her in bed. Most of my viewers are men, so I'm guessing that most of you have not seen this movie, but I did all the required reading that Nicole recommended to make this video, and Timothy's character is well written in a way to be immediately unlikable to anyone who is perceptive. Then Nicole mentions Edward Cullen from Twilight, who is like a hundred-year-old stalker who was in love with a high school kid. Okay, so once again, you're off topic. Pick a lane. I'm basing this off your title. Are they brainwashing women to like girly guys or not? 
because everything in this video says otherwise. And I'm not going to use the novels as some sort of argumentative point because, I mean, I like me some weird girls in the media I enjoy. <laughs> and I think what she says immediately after the thing about Edward is even more telling. My own thinking is that we don't really want to be attracted to men who scare us. <laughs> We don't want to be overpowered by men anymore. We want men who see us as their equal. We're not going to be assholes to us and have very toxic masculine traits. Okay, who hurt you? You be whoa, 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 whoa. Who hurt you? Look at your channel. Everything is negativity towards women and fat people. Someone clearly hurt you. You don't get to play the high ground here. began the video with, there are men that I hate, and in the past implied that at least a majority of men are abusive. Then we move on to you wanting very feminized versions of men, and now it's men scare you? She also says this in multiple videos. First of all, right now, I currently do work with a trainer, but it's so cool that the benefits are now like, let's get you to lifting more, let's get your energy levels up, let's get your sleep better, and let's getting you fucking strong as fuck so that if you need to beat someone up you can do so so her taking self-defense classes is a bad thing maybe i'm misreading this but she clearly says she's being trained to beat someone up if she has to implying that she's using it as a defense technique this is an abuse victim who has not yet recovered though she is trying and has mentioned multiple times that she goes to therapy so props to her for that keep at it but once i heard this stuff i started digging to see why she's interested in guys who deviate so far from the norm and says that an objectively bad guy like Edward Cullen is attractive because usually that's not a sign of good mental health. Then I found this. My dad's a little funny. He's so funny, he's so fucking silly, he like got up and left. I know that you're making a joke here, but I'm sorry that you went through that and I'm sorry that you didn't have a positive male influence in your life in the form of a parent. Which brings us to this video here about how she was in what sounds like a very abusive relationship in high school where the guy spread a bunch of false rumors about her after she broke up with him. Honestly, that's kind of feminine behavior for a guy. Now, I'm giving you a lot of credit here for, you know, not using her trauma as ammo, because I know a lot of other red pill guys actually would do that. But I do want to ask the comment of it's feminine behavior for a guy to spread rumors. Are you using that to say that only girls go around spreading false rumors about guys? Or are you using this as an attack on the abuser? Because there are two completely ways this can be interpreted. The latter is the correct answer. I believe she also worked in the restaurant industry for a bunch of years too, which I have always heard that it has quite a number of men in it who behave inappropriately, to say it euphemistically. Oh, 100%. I work for a fast food joint. I've seen some of the worst people have to offer. It is exceptionally worse when the cashier is a girl and something goes wrong with their order. In my experience, the co-workers aren't, like, horrible or sexist towards girls, but we definitely don't act appropriately around each other and, by all accounts, should probably be fired. And now why she got into modern feminist ideology makes sense. She's had a bunch of negative experiences with men, and I believe her friend group who has the same taste in men as her is similar in that regard because she mentioned that her and most of her friends are on psych meds. I'm fine. I'm genuinely really fine. Like I said, we're trying every SSRI under the sun. 95% of my friends are on SSRIs. Again, I'm sorry that you're going through that, but by saying that, you are also kind of admittedly putting yourself in a group that deviates from the norm. So when you say that you and your friends are attracted to Ezra Miller, I don't think that you can apply that to women in general. No, you can't, but you do that all the time too. Lots of your videos do this. You just lump women into one category. And your title is doing this. Your title is implying that all feminists are like her and are trying to push this. They're not. I'm also kind of concerned because she did an in-depth review of that movie, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, to which, if you haven't seen it, was about a guy fixing some of his mental health issues by making friends with older kids in high school. Personally, I did like the movie, but in her analysis, she missed almost every mental health red flag, like Emma Watson's character cheating on her boyfriend when she kisses the main character Charlie, Charlie's new friends introducing him to hard drugs to the extent that he gets hospitalized for overdosing, minors in a burlesque show, and this moment here where Ezra Miller's character Patrick kisses Charlie, a straight guy, against his consent. 
This is a major boundary violation and friendship ending material for a straight guy. The only mental health thing that Nicole got right was that the relationship between Emma Watson, who is 18, and Charlie, who is 14, was inappropriate. Yeah, that's fair. She didn't review the movie properly and she missed a lot of major issues with it. Now all the actors are really in their 20s, so it's hard to see exactly how inappropriate their relationship is, but you get the point. Also, outside of movies, I find that Nicole says a number of things that sound good, but are out of touch with the way people actually behave. But a really, really chiseled masculine body is not enough for women to be attracted to you. Because you can have the looks and be an asshole, and your looks mean absolutely nothing. And everyone has probably heard that a million times. It absolutely is good enough, and it's a major reason why both men and women hook up with losers and abusive partners. Oh, oh boy. No, it's not. You are just as out of touch as she is. Are there some girls who wouldn't mind? Yes, there are. But that's a small number, and ironically enough, they aren't the kinds of girls these guys would want to touch. I don't know where this weird stereotype came from, but if you are openly an asshole, people are not going to like you. You are aware that abusive people hide their abusive nature, right? You are aware that pretty much everyone who's been in an abusive relationship hide the fact that they were an asshole until very late into the relationship? Sure, sometimes people say, hey, he's bad news, don't go for him, and they ignore it, but that's still a little different than someone being an open asshole at like a club or something. Not to mention that hooking up is not hard at all. You do not have to try very hard to hook up. Sure, if you're an average guy, you're probably not getting with the hottest girl at the club, but you can definitely get laid if you put in the bare minimum effort. Yeah, that girl might not be the hottest thing there is on the market, but... If you're trying to just hook up, your standards and preferences do not matter because all you're trying to do is get your dick a little wet. Contrary to all the crap the red pill teaches, hooking up is not hard at all and women don't like guys who are mean to them regardless of how rich they are. If they do know for a fact he is mean, any self-respecting woman would not even so much as blink towards his direction. The ones who do go after him are not the kind of people you should want to associate with. But more than that, she says she's trying to make people better in the I Hate Men video. I just want to work with other people and talk with people and help others. You want to help people, but you can't do that if you're out here representing a guy like Joseph Quinn in a negative light and discrediting him for doing something right. That's not to say that the female gaze can't have its flaws, because it 100% can, and it does. For example, putting men on a pedestal for doing the smallest things ever and for things they don't even deserve to be put on a pedestal for. The number one example that comes to mind is Joseph Quinn, who plays Eddie Munson. But I remember seeing a TikTok of him having a conversation with like another woman, like a, just a very normal, simple conversation. And the comments were like, oh my God, he's such a good listener. He's looking at her in the eye when she speaks. He's so attentive. It's like, he's having a conversation. And we are putting this man on a pedestal for being normal. All you're doing here is getting women to have a negative opinion of men. That's what your audience is going to absorb when they hear you present your arguments like this. Now, I tried my best to find this TikTok, but I couldn't. However, I do want to point out that most people, men and women, are bad at listening and being attentive. It's actually a pretty hard skill, which is why his fans connect with it. And he does deserve to be put on a pedestal and praised for that, even from your perspective, because you do want more men behaving like Joseph Quinn, right? Listening to someone is not a hard skill at all. It's actually really easy, and I have both ADD and ADHD. I can focus and listen to people when they are talking to me pretty easily. It is not hard at all. It is not something that needs to be praised at all. If you cannot sit and listen to someone that is talking to you, there is something wrong with you. Not being able to wait your turn before talking is not a skill that you develop. It's just good manners. You don't need to be praised for having good manners. It's not impressive. It just means you're not an ass. As a guy you might convince, I'm certainly not going to think listening is a good thing if I'm going to get crapped on for it. All that being said, I really don't think she has a healthy view of men or masculinity. And you don't have healthy views of women or femininity. And the problem with that is that she says she's been in an abusive relationship in the past. Because of that, what I see is that instead of coming to terms with the reality of what men are, she is just avoiding any masculine traits in a man and deeming them as toxic. I don't think I've heard her say anything positive about masculine traits in this video, and I've watched it multiple times. You barely ever praise women in your videos. I've watched you for a long time, and on the rare times you do, it's when they are putting women down.
Instead, she promotes weak men who can't control their diets and says this. A lot of men that I've spoken to have talked about how they go to the gym so that they can be strong and they can be ripped. Sometimes they'll say it's for themselves and health, but a lot of times to also be perceived as more attractive to other women. When that's not what women ask for in the first place. Women 100% ask for this. <sighs> no, it's been a societal standard for years now. No one has asked for this, but people have been pushing this for years. Not to mention there are countless societal standards that are trying to push women to live up to. With this logic, men are asking women to look a certain way. Also, why does she present it as honorable to go to the gym for yourself, but kind of implies that it's bad to do so to attract women? If your only intention is to try to impress people, you will fail. People can tell when you're desperate, and I'm not even referring to dating. If you go into something with the intention of using that to impress someone, it's going to fail. I can speak from experience. I make short horror games as a hobby. The first couple I made with the intention of impressing people, trying to say, yeah, look what I did. As a result, those games are both not as good as they could be and did not get the attention I wanted them to get. If your entire reasoning for going to the gym is to get in shape so you can attract girls, you will fail in the long run. Sure, maybe it'll work short term, but then you'll set up a bad habit of only wanting to go to the gym to look good in front of others. That's not a good thing. I think the more honorable thing is to do it out of service to others because being attractive to the person that you're with matters. It shows that you care. Personally, if I was dating someone and she didn't make an effort to look attractive, then that would be the end of the relationship. Now, this is different. If you're with someone and you're going to the gym to keep yourself in at least decent shape so you can look good for your partner, that is completely different. Because you are doing it for both yourself and someone else. If you work out heavily while your wife is pregnant so you can play with the child when they're old enough, that's also a good thing. But if you're only working out to lose a few pounds in hopes of a girl noticing you, it's not going to work out that well. When I played football, I didn't go to early morning football weights to get muscle to flex and show off. I went there to get stronger so I could help the team get better during the season. I don't dress for a man. I don't look a certain way for a man. I don't act a certain way for a man. I know that modern feminists see this ideology as a thing to aspire to, but this ideology is a big reason why a lot of them are single in their late 30s. Not doing stuff for your partner is an expression of sociopathy and says that you don't care about them. If you're not doing something for your partner, you're an asshole. That is completely different than not looking good for strangers. That's how I would feel if my girlfriend said what she just said. I would feel like she doesn't care. I'm pretty sure you and everyone else would be happy if their girlfriend said she's not wearing certain things to get attention from random men. And it would be the same if I said I didn't work on my appearance for her. As for the rest of this, Nicole's whole video is very stream of consciousness and it's hard to follow her arguments from start to finish. We started off with dab bods, and then we moved on to Ezra Miller being attractive. Somewhere around that time, she had a sexist take of too many men in Hollywood causing her anxiety issues about performing for men. And I think that we can blame this on men being the sole writers of women pretty much since media began. Considering that most directors nowadays are still men, most writers are still men. I want to see this change in the future. Then she mentioned some other stuff and ends the video with this. How do we fix this? Well, I wasn't really aware that you brought a problem up. The main premise was that you perceived that men are mad about dab bods, which I don't think you proved, and was barely addressed. I mean, it's par for the course with some of your stuff. The title is still very misleading. Your premise was that feminism is brainwashing women to like feminine men, yet your only example is this one girl. The title should be, This Feminist is Explaining Why She Likes More Feminine Men. Instead, you clickbait your title to get hate views intentionally misleading people. The rest of the video is pretty much just some dumb stuff Nicole says that Mr. Sleep covers and can't argue against it. He gives a pretty detailed review of the three movies that are mentioned in the video, plus a review of the TV show that I have not heard of. Pretty good review of it, actually. I would say to check it out. Now, he ends it in a bit of an ironic comment on how we need to use better evidence when we have these kinds of arguments, and we need to have good evidence, really. I'm just going to leave my commentary here. Thank you all for watching, and remember to just say stop to toxic players.